Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. Today's episode will see what happened with SM3, new Starship information, particularly about the legs, more construction in the yard and finally SM4, so let's take a look. Let's begin with the testing that happened recently with the SM3 tank. As you all know, recently the tank section was moved to the test area, then on April 2nd SpaceX performed a successful first pressure test. This test was performed at ambient temperature using liquid nitrogen just as a precaution before the cryogenic test. Later in the day, after that first successful test, they began filling the bottom tank, but not much ended up happening after that. Then, at some point, the frost stopped making its way up the rocket as SpaceX began emptying the tank. They had to stop the test because there was a leaky valve from a piece of ground support equipment. Later that evening and into the following morning of April 3rd, SpaceX began retesting the SM3 vehicle. Then, there wasn't really a boom, but the rings below the tank seemed to get crushed by the weight. It all appeared to be too much for the stainless steel rings as the whole top section came crashing down. After this incident, Elon Musk obviously reported about it on Twitter saying, we'll see what the data review says in the morning, but this may have been a test configuration mistake. A few days later whilst writing the script, Musk provided some clarity and confirmed my initial assumption as to the cause. He responded to someone with the same assumption saying, pretty much, good news is that this was a test configuration error rather than a design or build mistake. Not enough pressure in the LOX tank ullage to maintain stability with a heavy load in the CH4 tank. This was done with N2. So what happened was, the oxygen tank lost the pressure that was giving it enough strength to support the methane tank, causing it to fold. Musk went on to elaborate more saying, if you lose pressure control and rocket propulsion tanks, you're doomed anyway, so might as well go all in. Then later went on to say, rockets and spacecraft have to operate in vacuum, so maintaining pressure is fundamental. However, this can be made very safe over time in my opinion. And finally, he also said there are redundant pressure control valves. It's a new system and SM3 was simply commanded wrong. Rockets are hard. And he's not wrong. These rockets are very hard, especially when you're constructing an unprecedented system like Starship. Musk said there would be no point in an abort system on Mars. You just have to make the rocket as safe as possible. He also said that they would reuse much of the SM3 thrust section given that it was mostly unharmed from this failure. One more tweet said, it is stable on the ground without propellant loaded, which is an improvement from the OG Atlas. Back in the day, these Atlas rockets, which were also made from steel, used to fold similarly to how Starship did when they lost pressure. As of now, I think SpaceX have cleared up most of the debris from the SM3 vehicle. As you can see, the only thing that really remains is that thrust section that they will be using again. One final thing that Elon Musk tweeted was a picture of some raptors that have arrived in Boca Chica, one of which is SN18. If you remember from a previous video, SN18 was recently in McGregor on a vertical test stand. Now, let's see what's happening in other Starship news. SpaceX recently released an official guide for Starship as all rockets have user guides so that you can see if it's a good fit for your payload. Everyday Astronaut recently asked Elon Musk on Twitter about some information from the guide about payload capacity. Musk responded with, mass of initial serial number ships will be a little high and ISP a little low, but over time it will be approximately 150 tons to low earth orbit fully reusable. Another tweet from Elon Musk in response to a tweet asking if Starship development is still on track, he responded saying that eventually Starship will have enough flight history to be used for NASA missions. I think that this will inevitably happen and I believe that Starship will get us to Mars first and NASA will help us live there. It was recently spotted in one of Elon Musk's photos of SM3 on the mount that there are new legs that look integrated differently. Musk replied to a tweet about an article by Teslarati saying the legs extend and telescope out so are longer than they seem but not as long as they will be for SM4+. Due to this, a bunch of people did a bunch of renderings as to how the legs would look and work. Here is a great animation by Stanley Creative. Kimi Torverty also created a similar animation and tweeted it to Musk asking how close it was. He said it was very close and went on to say need wider span, longer stroke and ability to auto level for uneven ground or leaning into high winds. He was also asked about whether or not they will redesign Super Heavy's legs to which he said they definitely need a wider span. One last thing I'd like to say on the new Starship legs is that these might just be for testing and we might see something different on the final vehicle. Now let's head over to the construction area. Starting with the new building we've been curious about as more work has been going on and there has been a good spot from somebody. I want to say thanks to the person who commented this on my previous video. What they said was that the new building and the gantry crane we saw in my last video are very similar to the hangar and pad at LC39A as you can see here. 
Very unlikely that this is a hanger in Boca Chica, but it reinforces the possibility that this might be a more permanent replacement for the tents. Also, they are deconstructing the current ring making tent, so it's very clear that they're moving this process. Do you think that this is going to be moved to the new tent or the new building? Let me know down in the comments. The new tent we've also seen going up recently has had a roof added, so it shouldn't be much longer before we see this ready for action. Behind this new tent, we still have the SN2 tank just hanging out, but not sure what fate is in store for this machine. Moving back onto Starship, the former SN3 nose cone has been moved yet again. I guess we will now see this used for SN4. I have no idea why they've moved it, but maybe it's a bit in the way and they definitely aren't needing it yet. However, moving on to SN4 as quite a bit has happened whilst its predecessor has been sitting on the test stand. Let's start with what has actually been produced so far. Here you can see that SpaceX has put together the first bulkhead and rings which are for the upper part of the methane tank. Next you can see that they have been preparing more rings for construction and stacking of the SN4 vehicle. Also these new nose cone components must be for SN5 now as they already have a nose cone ready for SN4. I don't know what they're working on over by the SN2 tank but they appear to be building more concrete bases. We saw the same thing for early versions of Starship and for Starhopper but they have now got a high bay and tents so I'm not sure why they're building these. Maybe their production speed is set to increase by quite a bit and so maybe we'll see some more builds going on simultaneously. More components have arrived in Boca Chica with what appears to be a whole bunch of COPVs. These were also on the side of SN3 and are used for storing fluid under pressure to use for other components in the rocket. The final clip I want to show you is this ring being moved into this tent, so progression seems to be happening really fast on SN4. I think that by next week we could potentially see at least half of it stacked. Just a couple of additional things that have come whilst editing this video. Musk just posted a picture on Twitter of a header tank attached to a bulkhead, thought it would be really cool to share with you guys. Also, this is the latest build diagram from Raphael Adami and shows which parts of SN4 are done based on what's needed for the whole system. Once again, massive thanks to Mary Boca Chica Girl for supplying amazing footage for NASA Spaceflight. Also, thanks to S Padre who always have a live stream of the launch pad, you are all amazing. Plus, a huge thanks to everyone for the support of this channel, we've just hit 300 subscribers so I can't thank you enough. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX Show, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.